The Nintendo NX is dead. Long live the Nintendo Switch. The highly anticipated and now officially named Nintendo Switch will be a home handheld hybrid with detachable controllers and it's out March 2017. But what actually is it? What about the controllers, the games, the system's power, the fact that it's using Nvidia technology and not AMD chips like the PS4 and Xbox One? I'm James from GamesRadar and this is everything you need to know about the Nintendo Switch. So what is the Nintendo Switch? Well, it's a new console handheld hybrid from Nintendo. The console in question can be seen here. It's the bit everyone's holding. The docking station you'll leave at home. It merely charges the device while connecting it to your television via HDMI. That's it. Of course, you knew that, but some people were either confused or holding out hope that the console's dock would act as the console a la the Wii U, or at least provide a boost of processing power. It's not, and it doesn't. It's just a charging base that connects the Switch to your TV. The Switch will support Amiibos though, so you don't have to go and buy the Wii U version of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild just so you can use the Amiibo shipping alongside it. How big is the screen and the console? The screen you'll use while on the move is inside the console itself, so you can switch, yep the clues in the name, from playing on the sofa to playing while you're out and about. The size of the screen hasn't officially been revealed, but by using some clever maths, taking the known size of the stick on the controller and placing it over the console, we can suggest that its screen will be 145mm wide by 82mm high, while the complete console, including the controllers, will be 253mm wide by 106mm high. This basically makes it the same size as the Wii U gamepad, with a very, very slightly bigger screen. How do the controllers work? There's a number of options here depending on where you are and what you're doing. When you drop the switch bit, the part with the screen, into a dock attached to your TV, you'll use a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller to control the action on screen. But confusingly, it seems like you don't have to. You can also use a separate accessory to combine the two Joy-Con controller parts into a standard-ish controller, with two joysticks, buttons galore, and even a pair of grips. As a bonus, it also looks like doing this will charge the Joy-Cons at the same time. For on-the-go play, the sides of the Switch pad can be removed and used as two tiny controllers, one in each hand. Kind of like a Wiimote and Nunchuck, but without the annoying cables. Or you can attach them to the main body, which is done, if the patent is anything to go by, via a series of infrared cameras rather than a direct digital connection. In this form, it looks like a Wii U gamepad, but it isn't tethered to a separate console since all the brains are right there between the controller sections. For multiplayer, each Joy-Con can be held on its side and used like a scaled down controller. You can keep one for yourself and give the other to a friend. More players can join in if they bring their own Joy-Cons and you can even sync up with other Switch consoles for local multiplayer on more than one screen. Does the Nintendo Switch have a touchscreen? No, probably not. The screen is inaccessible while the Switch is plugged into its TV dock, and adding touch sensitivity would be an extra cost for a console that's already packed with custom technology and accessories. It also looks like your fingers would be too far from Switch's screen in handheld mode to interact with it comfortably. What's powering the Nintendo Switch? The Switch will be the first console powered by Nvidia technology since the company co-developed the PS3's reality synthesizer graphics processor with Sony. And while we still don't have specifics like RAM, hard drive space or processor speeds yet, we can still figure out what this means. The Switch will feature a custom Tegra processor. But what's that? Well, it's the designation for Nvidia's mobile efforts such as tablets and smartphones. This means that the Switch is likely not as powerful as the Xbox One or PS4, so it looks like Nintendo is staying the course opting for creativity and unique design over raw power. That being said, we've seen the Tegra Model X1 chip capable of playing a scaled down version of the Unreal 4 Elemental tech demo. Meanwhile, Digital Foundry has found games such as Doom 3 BFG Edition, which runs at 720p resolution and 60 frames a second, with notable dips in frame rate on Xbox 360 and PS3, running at a smooth 1080p 60fps on a Tegra X1. But here's the interesting bit. Nvidia is already gearing up for its successor, the X2. Basically, all you need to know is that the way Nvidia constructs its X1 chip is based on 2014 technology, while the X2 is based on 2016 tech. Switch dev kits are currently using the X1 model, but that doesn't mean the final version won't have X2 chips inside. With Switch being the only console using Nvidia technology, both PS4 and Xbox One use AMD tech, this could mean extra hassle and cost for developers who want their games on all three platforms. Or it might be a minor hurdle. It all depends on how good the Nvidia tools are. The games. Switch will be a cartridge-based console. Welcome back to 1993! 
but actually cartridges make sense given the portable nature of the machine, though they do raise questions over game size. Apparently Nintendo is recommending a cartridge size of 32GB, which is pretty healthy, though not big enough to handle certain high profile current gen games on rival formats. Just remember how much fuss was kicked up when Call of Duty Ghosts immediately ate up 50GB of hard drive space on the PS4 and Xbox One. Activision, Bethesda and From Software have all signed up, so it's possible we'll see the likes of COD, Destiny, Dark Souls, Skyrim and Fallout on the machine. We've also seen several new Nintendo games, including a brand new 3D Mario and Mario Kart. And then there's Beyond Good and Evil 2. A Nintendo Switch exclusive? Hmm. Nintendo has also confirmed that the next entry in the Zelda franchise, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, has been delayed till next year and will release simultaneously on the Wii U and Nintendo Switch. Both versions have been developed concurrently. And that, my friends, is everything you need to know about the Nintendo Switch. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more gaming news, reviews, previews and features right here on GamesRadar Plus.